In this tutorial I'm going to look at what a confidence interval means. As the first example I want to talk about the, um, the paper that we looked at in lectures on the perceived time uh, that people think it's going to take them to walk a 300 metre path through an urban environment. Now let's say that we have an experiment where we ask people what the time is they estimate is going to take them to walk this distance and we do this experiment 20 times. Now every time we do the experiment we're going to get a slightly different sample and so for every different sample we're going to get a slightly different average. So what I've generated here is I've gener generated 20 samples but I've made sure they actually all come from the same distribution. So in this case I know that the true mean underlying all these samples is 12 minutes. Obviously if I was running the experiments for real I wouldn't know what the true mean was but in this case I do because I generated the data. So what I want to show you is the difference you're going to, you can get in samples um, even when they all do have the same underlying mean. So I've got 20 experiments, they all have the same true mean of, of 12 minutes, but the sample mean for each one is different. Now if I, the, the center of each plot here represents the, the mean that is the sample mean that's calculated from the data and the 95% confidence interval are these bars here. Now what the 95% confidence interval means is that if we repeat experiments a, lot, uh, a number of times 95% of the time we expect that we have covered the true mean with our, our interval. Of course that means 5% of the time you won't. So a 95 confidence interval for, mean, for the mean means you're pretty sure you've covered the mean. The true mean is under there somewhere, but it's possible that it's not. Now if I put the crosshairs, that's this little button here, over my graph, and I'm going to put it right on 12 because that's where I happen to know the true mean is. And we, if we look across, we can see that just about all of the samples cover the true mean. Some are smack bang on the middle, some are a little bit higher, some are a little bit low. But the one very at the very end, number, experiment number 20, doesn't cover the true mean at all. If that was the only experiment we did, and in this case it's actually got a sample mean of more than 14 and a half, and it doesn't cover 12, we would mistakenly believe that the true mean was much higher than it really was. So that is what a confidence interval means. A 95% confidence interval means that 95% of the time we think we've covered the true value. And the only other thing I'll point out here is that these first seven or oh, six, I'll get rid of these crosshairs, turn that off. These first six um, samples have got much smaller intervals than the rest of them. And if I wave the mouse over and it brings up, there it is, uh, sample size equals 30 at the bottom, n equals 30. Whereas over here I've got n equals 15. So the bigger your sample size, the more sure you're going to be that you've got the right mean, the smaller the interval will be. It's, you're still going to get 5% of the time you'll be wrong, but the actual interval will be smaller. The smaller the sample size, the less sure that you've got the right mean. The confidence interval is much wider, but the percentage is still the same. 5% of the time you're probably going to be wrong. Uh, and the other thing that can affect the variation, the, the size of your confidence interval, is the natural variation in the data um, and the size of the confidence interval. We could change this to be a different level. If I select that and go to Edit Interval and Options, I could ask for a 99% confidence interval. And now they'll all be a little bit wider because I want to be that little bit more sure that I've got the true mean. If we add the crosshairs back in, and with that experiment number 20, with our 99% confidence interval, we've just got, we've just covered the true mean now. So now all of our samples include the true mean. Um, that's because we know what the true mean is and we don't always do that. So let's have a look at our real estate data now. So I'm going to go to graph, uh, interval plot, and you can also get this through the stat um, ANOVA interval plot down here. So there's a couple of places you can get it. With groups, OK, and I'm going to look at selling price and I want to split it up by region. And I'm going to bring the crosshairs back up. 
So we've got a 95% confidence interval, which means 95% of the time we expect that we have covered the true mean with our data. So if all of these regions had the same underlying um, average selling price, we would expect that their confidence intervals would all overlap, just as they did with the data I generated. And these three do. Regions 1, 2 and 4 do overlap. Region 3 is very different. Those confidence intervals don't overlap at all. So it's very unlikely that Region 3 has the same uh, true sell un average selling price that these three do. If I right click on these, edit interval bar in and set that up to 99, if I'm even more sure that I've got the right answer, let's go back to the crosshairs. And do they overlap? They still don't overlap. So even with a 99% confidence interval uh, around the means, regions 3 is not overlapping with the other regions. So there's very strong evidence here from this plot that region 3 must have a different underlying true mean than these three regions. And that's what we can test with the analysis of variance.